What is going on YouTube fam? Welcome back to a brand new video with my boy Vance. Today behind the camera we are actually about to hit a push day. If you are watching this video today, my coaching launch is now live. It went live on Monday. I'm accepting limited spots and they are filling quickly. So if you are interested in some online coaching by me or want to know more, contact info is down below. Also what happened like a little bit ago is Jorge Rosado Fitness IQ. I'll put his Instagram right here and the story right here. Chad, what's going on, bro? You're the lucky winner of the Fitness Cruise giveaway, so make sure to contact me at my email. Congratulations, and thank you everybody who participated. I won a free cruise to the Bahamas. I'm going on from the 21st to the 25th. It's a free fitness cruise with a bunch of fitness influencers and just people that are into fitness are gonna go on a cruise together for five days to the Bahamas. Absolutely paid for and free. Um, when I got that, I was like freaking out. I'm incredibly blessed to go, but I'm actually going to be starting a two-week cut today to kind of shred off some body fat and kind of look a little bit more leaner for the cruise. Uh, so that is starting today. I'm going to start implementing cardio and dropping my macros tomorrow. But anyways, we're going to hop into this push workout. We're actually going to give you guys some tips on how to break a bench plateau. If you're hitting any sort of plateau on bench, I know the bench press is a super popular lift. Um, and a lot of people struggle with it form-wise, technique-wise. Um, and hit a lot of plateaus. Me, I definitely have, but lately I've kind of broken out of that with some tips and tricks that I've learned. And so that's what we're here to teach you guys today. Sit back, relax, enjoy the vlog. We're actually gonna relay some of the workout footage over this right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and ask Vance what some of his top bench press tips are of breaking out of a plateau, just general technique, anything you want them to know. So, Technique wise, probably I think two of the biggest things that I like to focus on is keeping your elbows tucked. Because if your elbows flare out, you're not gonna be as strong. You're gonna come untucked, you're not gonna stay tight, and you're not gonna be able to press as much weight if your elbows flare out, and it puts your shoulder in a bad position for injury. Um, another thing is I see a lot of people, they kind of press like this, rather than pressing straight up. So if you place the bar kind of across your palm this way and act like you're punching the sky, it's a lot better for pressing and you're not gonna have like wrist pain, if that makes sense. Cause I know I used to bench and I would have it like this and I would get a lot of pain in my wrist and stuff. But when I focus on punching the sky, you don't really need wrist wraps or anything and you feel a lot stronger out of the bottom. Right. So the weight's not just sitting in your wrist, it's actually in your hand. I agree 100% with all of that. Um, one thing I would say is that your technique depending on your body, depending on what you're used to, is gonna really dictate the way you bench. Mm -hmm. For me, I really hit a big bench plateau when I had my grip a little bit closer, and for me, triceps are not a strong point for me. So I really struggled with locking out at the top of the movement, and that was part of me having a closer grip. Um, I also decided to go heels flat on the ground, which gave me a little bit more leg drive. And as you can see, I touched on this last video, a little bit of bench arch, I mean back arch, is gonna help you not only dig your scapula into the bench and help you stay tighter, but it's gonna shorten the bar path um, and make your bench overall stronger. Because to me, the bench is less a bodybuilding movement and more just a strength push up some freaking weight movement. Yeah, because I know a lot, of, a lot of people that focus more on bodybuilding, yeah. or the aesthetic side part of it, yeah. they do a lot of dumbbell, dumbbell stuff. Dumbbell, yeah just because you know it's you have free range of motion yeah. or contraction. And that's why I've been doing a lot of dumbbell bench lately, not so much barbell, but obviously prepping for the powerlifting meet, I'm incorporating it. Um, as you can see right here, I am actually lining up my ring finger on the ring of the bench. So I have a typically a little bit more wider of a grip, but I'm still keeping my elbows tucked. Um, one thing when you bring the bench down, you don't want it to hit your upper chest or your middle chest, you kind of want it like right below. I say right below like nipple Like nipple line. level, yeah. And another right thing that. that you reminded me of that is don't press straight up. Yeah, oh yeah, when, I didn't When angle. you're struggling on a rep, you almost want to press toward your eyes. Now I'm not saying just fucking go like this, but almost at a little angle toward your eyes. Yeah, so instead of like the bar path being up and down, you kind of want it on a slight um, path backwards. Um, exercise wise, if you have sticking points in your bench, so say you're failing at the bottom of your rep, one thing I would recommend is incorporating pause reps because you're not gonna have that momentum that you get when you go touch and go, so it's gonna be strictly the force of you pressing the weight off your chest, no momentum whatsoever like that. And if you're the opposite and you're having trouble with your lockout, focus on triceps, close grip bench, and you can do things like 
I know you can use like a slingshot. Um, and one thing that I like to do is floor press. So you basically lay on the ground, unrack the weight, which you probably will do it in a squat rack. And you just come down till your elbows come on the floor and it's literally just the lockout. And what that's gonna do too is you're gonna be able to go heavier so your central nervous system is going to get used to handling heavier loads at the top. So Solid. That's what I like to do for mine. So that's awesome as far as like secondary movements to help you with your bench. One thing also is if you're stuck in a plateau, change up the rep schemes. Don't go in doing like a 5x5 five five every single time. I mean, that is a strategy that I used at some point, but honestly, like I will... I'll do like three rep maxes, I'll do five rep maxes, I'll do like a heavy single and then work up to like a four by eight. I'm always changing up the frequency. Progressive and, overload. Yeah, progressive overload. And I mean, that's the same thing in progressive, if you focus strictly on progressive overloading as far as weight. So if you're doing five by threes for like two months straight and you're just trying to increase the weight, it's gonna be a little bit hard. So maybe try adding more frequency, changing up the rep schemes. Um, one week you could do like a three by eight and then the next week you do a five by five and the five by five feels super light. So always switch it up. Um, and honestly, don't bench every single day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I actually did this in the summer. So when I was in the summer, when I was in a consistent surplus, I was, it was the hardest I've ever trained in my life. I wanted to test something out. And so what I did was I tested my max. I hit like 340, I think. And so what I did was for I think three weeks, all I did was I would hit a top set of one, three or five on flat bench to keep the movement in my motor pathways. And I would do all my working sets incline. And I would do that one day and then the other day, which brings me to another point to increase your bench, is don't neglect your shoulders. So on the other day, I would do military press, presses with dumbbell, and I swear to God, my bench went from 340 to 350 in that three weeks because I neglected shoulders and I would never do incline. I would just bench. I would just do bench, bench, bench. But I changed it up and it obviously worked, so. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think we covered just about anything. Um, any questions you might have, uh, leave a comment down below. Freaking all hung up. All hung up on imaginary problems. You gotta focus on what's real, man. Welcome to day two of the vlog. We just got done at Best Buy, as you can see, and we picked up a GoPro Hero 7. I've been wanting the, one of these ever since the last time I was in the Philippines, um, quite a while back. Decided it was a good time to pick one up since I am going to the Bahamas in two weeks. Um, figured it'd be fun to like take this on like jet skis or whatever you do down there. So picked up the GoPro Hero 7 Black. I'm excited. I've watched reviews on this. It's pretty cool and this is the first year they actually implemented their own like really good stabilization system into it so it's almost like you're having a gimbal on um, along with that I got a couple of attachments so I got the extended pull that attaches to the end of the GoPro I got a 64 you get my memory card for that I actually picked up a rechargeable backup uh, battery for my G7X right there and a head strap which I'm actually think I'm gonna put to use right now.
actually didn't look back at that GoPro footage from my head mount, so I hope it was good, but that was actually my first grocery haul on this mini cut that I'm doing. So essentially this is a cutting grocery haul. So this is what I eat primarily when I'm on a cut. Um, this cut's only gonna be two weeks long and nothing much really changes. It's just a little less carbs. Um, so let's start off with the carb sources, all the fun stuff. So number one, we got some Easy Mac. If you notice, everything that I get is just super easy for me. It's super easy to cook, just pop in the microwave because I am a college student, I'm on the go all the time, and that's just the easiest and quickest for me. So I got some Easy Mac mac and cheese. As carb source, I got some Skinny Cow ice cream sandwiches, guys. These are amazing if you want something sweet. One sandwich comes out to 160 calories, three fat, 29 carb. So these are great. I got the Snickerdoodle flavor. I love having these for snacks or in the morning because these are actually Kodiak cakes. You guys know how I love Kodiak cakes. These are actually their little, call them Flapjack Unleashed. You just fill them with water, throw them in the microwave 60 seconds, and it's like a microwave pancake in a little cup. And this is the chocolate peanut butter flavor. These are awesome. Macros are 290 calories, 11 fat, 39 carbs, all protein. So a little bit higher in fat, but trust me, they are worth it 100%. So we got three of those. Um, these I found recently at my local Kroger. Uh, so basically it's called like a stir fry starter. So basically it's like noodles and a bunch of vegetables and you just throw it on a pan and heat it up. Um, when I'm bulking, I like to make this in coconut oil. Uh, since I'm cutting, I'm just gonna be using some Pam spray and having this like chicken. So it's gonna be like a chicken stir fry. That's super easy because I hate buying vegetables fresh and cutting them up. And that leads me to my next thing. As you can see, I have already cut up asparagus and already cut up like fajita mix. Um, because I really like eating a lot of vegetables when I'm cutting, it keeps, it keeps me full. Um, obviously it keeps me healthy, make sure I'm getting all those nutrients and all that fiber in when I'm in a caloric deficit. So lots of vegetables are key when you are cutting, guys. Um, next vegetable, we got spinach. I saute this, have it with my eggs and everything. First, we got the microwave broccoli. You guys have seen this before. Um, we actually got some Power Crunch bars because I ran out of One Up bars again. This is the... Uh, the peanut butter cream, original flavor, these are actually really good. A little bit higher in fat though. Uh, 12 fat, 10 carb, 13 protein. This is a good pre-workout snack. You guys know when I'm cutting, I have these 100 calorie Better Oats oatmeal packets. Got a couple honey crisp apples, some bananas. And I got two like microwave sweet potatoes. These are a source of carbs that I have when I'm not having rice. Honestly, rice is like my go-to carb source, but Remember, I want something different, I'll have sweet potatoes, rice, Uncle Ben's jasmine rice. These are pretty high in calories, but since I'm only doing a two week cut, I'm gonna be able to manage and fit them into my macros. So, carbs right now, macros are gonna be around 330 carbs. Got some unsweetened vanilla almond milk with coconut. Figured I'd give it a shot. Um, protein sources, I actually picked up ground beef and chicken the other day and salmon as well so I actually didn't get any from the grocery store there but I have some of this triple I've never had this before this is the triple zero Dannon Oikos Greek yogurt I've had the light and fit Greek yogurt but this is actually zero fat zero, um, zero fat 13 carb and 15 grams of protein so a little bit more protein and this is the strawberry flavor so excited to try that out um, we got 12 whole eggs here Got some egg whites because this is just liquid protein. My favorite Gatorade Zeros, guys. I have these when I'm bulking because I don't like drinking my calories that much. But these are great. They're, they taste amazing. Um, taste better than G2. G2 is a little bit more watered down. These Gatorade Zeros are great. Um, I do have Powerade Zeros as well, time to time, but those actually kind of bloat me. These give me zero bloat at all. So I definitely recommend these Gatorade Zeros. Got one in the orange. Um, limeade and the glacier cherry and the last two things I got these little tuna packets these are only like a dollar a pop and this is like the Thai the Thai Thai chili style flavor so these are actually super good but that is it for the grocery store guys spent like around 60 bucks um, so super easy everything's super easy to cook especially for some like the college student so I'm on a two-week cut to get ready for this cruise and that is gonna be it for the video guys hopefully you learned a few tips from Vance and I as far as benching um, and enjoyed that workout commentary that we did. It was a little bit of a different style than usual. And I hope you enjoyed that GoPro footage that I got at the grocery haul. Um, and yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please drop a like down below. Um, it would mean the world to me. And I will see you guys in the next one.